Good morning from Vietnam. <laughs> Travel Thursday. You it off. Travel, Travel Thursday. Thursday or Tuesday or Wednesday. I don't know what whatever day this is days. coming out. <laughs> Probably Thursday. <laughs> Probably Thursday. Uh, okay. So we're just going to get right into it today. We are talking about Travel Tuesday, the big sort of like Black Friday deals. Cyber Monday deals. For travel stuff. And basically determining whether or not it was actually a real thing. Yeah. So for those of you that missed last week, um, we got a question from one of our friends who asked, is this Travel Tuesday a thing? And for those of you that don't know, Travel Tuesday is supposedly this day, the Tuesday after Thanksgiving in America, for those of you that celebrate, um, where just there's supposed to be a wild amount of travel deals. Crazy flights, deals. Hotel, They're literally flights, giving ho- away airplanes. Flights, hotels, you name it. <laughs> Anything you can think of. Of course, the skeptics in us yep. felt like, I don't know. I don't know that we can just hang on to one specific day to say we're going to book our flights for the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. So last week we ran an experiment. We took a screen recording of flights leaving from Chicago, Illinois, all the way to city, various cities in Europe. And we did the same test on Travel Tuesday, November 28th. I even I even VPNed into the US. Last week, what we found was the flight from Chicago to London on February 6th to February 21, 21st was $592. When I checked on the 28th, it was $613. Chicago to Paris round trip, $535. On November 28th, that exact same flight, $535. So <laughs> everything kind of remained the same. Mm-hmm. In fact, a lot of the cities, the prices for the flights went up a little bit. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. It there was there was no real measurable difference yeah. that we could find at all in flight prices. Now there were some like very specific deals mm-hmm. that we came across. For example, that five hundred dollar deal with Frontier Airlines yeah. where you like get unlimited flights with them for a year, which seems like the worst decision anybody <laughs> could make is deciding to that'd be like an unlimited Amtrak pass. You know, you'd only get there half the time and it would take you twice as long as you thought. Definitely. I mean, there were, and we were keeping track of our emails and things like that, things that would come in because we're we're subscribed to a lot of airlines, emails, hotel deals, mm-hmm. hotel deals. Wow, is that so hard to hear say? Hotel deals. Mm-hmm. And I felt like I got the most number of emails about travel deals on Black Friday and Cyber Monday, but Absolutely. no mention of Travel Tuesday. Zero. Like, Tons of Hawaiian Airlines deals, tons of American Airlines deals. But yeah, everything everything that I got was all specific to Cyber Monday, the Monday after Thanksgiving, and Black Friday, the Friday after Thanksgiving. Yeah, and I think I most of the deals that did exist were for very specific dates yes. for very specific flights. So you get like so you get like very small window to actually be able to book these deals. And I don't it just doesn't feel like a real thing yet. The question is, would we would we rely on this one date to plan out our travel for the next year? No. Yeah, no. <laughs> absolutely not. I would just say when you see something that's a good deal to the place that you want to go, book it. Yeah. Yeah, and I think we saw the same thing across hotels. Like every single hotel website was like, we're giving you 20% off, mm-hmm. but then they just like up the price 20% and then say that it's 20% lower. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's not actually a deal. It just makes you feel like one. And I feel like all these different hotels and travel agencies and everything else, they just kind of like publish these crazy deals that are only good for one weekend just to get in on the Black yeah. Friday thing. Yeah. But they're not actually any cheaper. Yeah. It's just, yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah know. they all do the same thing which is they say like hey is there more demand in this flight are lots of people searching for it awesome we're going to automatically jack the price up to the moon mm-hmm. so therefore like a black friday deal where everybody's searching for flights is yeah. incompatible with that system it's just going to jack the price up as soon as lots of people start buying it so they'd have to do something like manually and keep the price down which means they'd have to like build a whole new system for pricing these flights out i just think it's unrealistic yeah but i I mean it just all comes down to consumerism and like getting people in on holidays you know like Mm -hmm. i mean we won't even go into that topic but i have a lot of feelings about mass marketing around valentine's day and things oh, like sure. that but yeah just like weaponizing people's sadness and loneliness <laughs> to make them buy more stuff more happiness. <laughs> right, right. Um, uh, so yeah i think 
I think still the solution to this, like if you are genuinely looking for really good flight deals, it's still just to sign up for Scott's cheap flight slash going, going, going. and going. <laughs> I mean, that's the only way going. it's the only going. way it can be said. Or, and I think this is probably the best travel hack that we've discovered mm. recently is just to find new routes that airlines are offering that are just yes. beginning this year. And then as soon as they offer those routes, like as soon as you can book them, generally they're crazy cheap. So yeah. we took advantage of that with Jetstar to Australia three times this year already. <laughs> and that was 200 and something dollars round trip yeah. from Honolulu to Sydney, which was or just like, what? Yeah. So I think if you know there's an airline that you are loyal to, or you just know that there's a place that you want to go to, I would start following or checking, you know, specific airlines, um, sign up for their newsletters, sign up for their Instagram accounts. Honestly, that's how we found out mm -hmm. that Hawaiian Airlines was flying a new route to Fukuoka from Honolulu. And it was a wildly inexpensive yeah. flight. It was like $170 trip. one way. way. It was yeah. so cheap. Yeah. It was so cheap. I think there are lots of different ways to find a good deal. I don't know that Travel Tuesday is the one, the one and all be all one. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> So yeah, I think that's it. Uh, moving on, Travel Tuesday, at least from our perspective in the experiment we run, not yeah, a real thing. But what uh, is a real thing? Mm -hmm. Travel Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Every week. Every week here, helping you travel. Just ask questions. Please ask. We're just like, in the comments section every week, there's all these like really nice supportive things of people we being like, them. this is great. And we love that. But ask some more questions so we can help you guys travel more directly. Okay. So... Next thing we want to talk about, uh, Lisa, tell us about this. Uh, oh, yes. Tell us about this terrible so, news that has occurred. I, I don't know if you remember a few episodes ago, we talked about, we, we posed the question, if you could get on a cruise ship for a year, two years, three years for like $1,000 a month, would you do it? Mm -hmm. A lot of people overwhelmingly said no. But there are a lot of people that were really, really excited about it, unfortunately for them. This one three-year cruise around the world was canceled all because they didn't have a ship. <laughs> Just that small detail I mean, of we don't have a cruise it's, ship It's to wild. Take you so a cruise I was with. reading the article on uh, NPR. Out of all the things to screew up. I mean, just listen to this. They were promised the world, but cruise company Life at Sea recently told customers who bought passage on a three-year voyage to visit 140 countries their trip was called off. Oof. Those customers are now scrambling to make new plans for where they will live for the next three years and to extract refunds from the cruise line. God, could you it's imagine wild. That? Okay, so like if you're choosing to go on a three-year-long cruise that was supposed to leave in November, yeah. you're making like big life changes. You're selling your home. You're, yes, you're moving everything out. You're selling you're all your furniture. You're like, someone's taking care of your cat. Like You're like, yeah. you're making so many life changes yes. to be able to go onto a cruise ship for three years and then to have them just say, we forgot to get a cruise ship for this cruise. Isn't that wild? And they Ugh. were, and then the worst part is there was no like lead time. So mm -hmm. they were set to depart on November 1st, departing from Istanbul. Some passengers reportedly only learned of the cancellation after arriving in Turkey. Jeez. So oh, God, they had already done everything. They're there. I know. <laughs> I just, Ugh. oh my gosh. And they put deposits Jeez. down. I just, it's why I can't even imagine. Some people are, I mean, do you think this is, some people are comparing this to that like festival fire thing that was <laughs> yeah, yeah. put out on Netflix a while ago. Right. right. This kind of sounds, like, sounds a, like a scam. Yeah. It sounds like a scam. It kind of sounds like a San Francisco startup that like doesn't ever <laughs> launch a product. You know, they like get everyone all excited. They're like, this app is going to change your life. It's going to make money for you. It's going to fix all your problems. Yeah. And then they like never actually release anything, but they take all of the customer's money and then just disappear into the wind. Or basically, it's like NFTs. <laughs> it's like <laughs> NFTs where like everyone was promised that that was going to be just, the thing and then it's just not. It's just wild because I think, and this, I love this article because it's actually putting like, the reality of what it means to get on a three-year cruise ship and plan for a big life change like this yes. to, to like, it's, it's humanizing it. I mean, there are so many people that said that they were excited about this because they were looking forward to making friends, having a community on this cruise ship. Yes. They were looking for, I mean, they were going to see over a hundred different countries in this three-year period. Now they have to deal with all these things like airfare costs, refunds for visas, even like what do you mm -hmm. what do you even do? And some people are still waiting for their refund. I just can't 
can't even imagine. Especially because I think the three year long one costs like over a hundred thousand yeah. dollars per person, like so, well over a hundred. Yeah, thousand. life at sea cruise costs. So the cheapest package started at one hundred ninety six thousand dollars for a single traveler, two hundred thirty one thousand for couples. Some people already started shipping boxes yeah, of for course. the cruise yeah. ship. They didn't have a ship. <laughs> they didn't have a ship. What? And they didn't communicate this to anyone until literally the day oh. that... Just, oh. And think of all the people who were going to work on that cruise ship who had secured three years of employment. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they're told, oh, yeah, by the way, oh. we're, we're not hiring no, any of you. Like, that's Nobody not wins from the situation. Play around with. And Ugh. this is something that was totally in their control, you know? Yeah. Um, even communication about it anyway. Yeah, we're talking like thousands of people's jobs who are like taking care of the rooms, taking care of the people on board, cooking the meals, yeah. driving the ship, like all these people who had been like, okay, we're going to be able to feed mm -hmm. our family for three more years. They're just, yeah, I honestly can't imagine it. I feel like I'm the type of person who would just sell everything to go live on a cruise ship for three years. I mean, we did that sell everything to like go <laughs> go travel for a year, but then but then the pandemic upended it. But that was a different story. And I feel like what I would do in that situation is I would just travel anyway. Mm. I would just say like, screw it. Thanks for the $200,000 back. I have that now or however much it was, like the ton yeah. of the money. And just, and my entire plans would be changed and there would be this long grieving process totally. of like three weeks to a month where I'm like, what the f did I just do? <laughs> like, why did I sell everything? I quit my job. I moved out. To, yeah. I'm out in Istanbul. I sold everything I own. Ugh. But I think the next thing I would do is I would just keep traveling. I mean, know? I think, yeah, I agree. I think that is an easy thing for us to say, though, because sure. that's what happened to us, right? We like quit our jobs to travel, take a one-year honeymoon. Pandemic upended everybody's lives. Mm -hmm. We were grateful and very lucky to yeah. have a place to stay. And we, you know, started making YouTube videos. <laughs> that, but, but I think like, yeah, it took us like a month almost three months to realize no i think we shouldn't just sit here mm -hmm. you know and that's when the camper van started but i can imagine for a lot of these people who get on a cruise ship they might not have that option to just get up and travel you know many sure. people might um might not have the means to walk around get around easily you know navigate traveling traveling for a long time is hard and i can see yeah. the benefit of a cruise ship yeah. and why something like this sounds like a dream for a yeah. lot of people especially those who are retired and and want to live out their retirement dreams yeah. of traveling 140 countries in three years like what a dream you get to see like yeah like that's oh that's like three quarters of the countries yep. on planet earth like yeah. that's so that'd be so cool i'll keep following the story but i really do hope that some of their travel dreams do end up coming true yeah moving on moving on to next a more lighthearted question, light question, next question. And topic um, so this question comes from Stephen Pete. Oh, what's up, Stephen Pete? <laughs> Stephen Pete and Hayes. Hi. <laughs> hi, hi, hi. <laughs> Who asks a really good, um, actually, actually asks us two good questions. So Steph and Pete say, here's a boring, perhaps two personal question still on the healthcare topic. What do you guys do for healthcare in the States? This past summer was our first time spending a significant amount of time in the U.S. without company-sponsored healthcare. And right. man, that search was tough. I mean, I think... To answer that briefly, we'll also just say, yep, we understand. Yep. And I know this doesn't apply for many, many of you watching, but I think the TLDR or the, the short version of it is that in the U.S., when you don't have health care through an employer, you're searching on something called the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And the marketplace is full of different kinds of insurances that you can purchase it is very challenging to navigate. Yeah. It is expensive. <laughs> yes. We had to do the same. Yeah. So the this like um, this website which we call healthcare.gov mm -hmm. is this marketplace that just is a in between yeah. of selling other companies' health insurances yeah. to individual people. They kind of do all like the background checking, they figure out how much income you make, and then based on that, it'll spit out a bunch <sighs> of quotes from all these healthcare companies about how much it'll cost for you to either sign up as a family or individually it makes me for health sad. insurance in the United States. It really does. <laughs> yeah. All of it does. And I I mean we won't go into too much detail about healthcare and healthcare specifically in the US. All is this to say is when we were traveling when we were traveling full time, you know, we we were able to use safety wings, nomadic and travel insurance and it, it was just fine, but now that we have a home base, it's definitely a lot more challenging. 
Yeah, for sure. For sure. And I think, God, I, there's not even like a good answer to this no. question. What I've become now that we're not working for it, like we are our own employers, mm. basically. Um, I think we've just become more accustomed to paying out of pocket for things. Yes. To not really answer your question. We don't have a good solution to this. <laughs> no, and, we don't. And it feels like a larger problem, you know, that honestly makes me sad whenever I think about it. I mean, when when we travel, we get to meet so many people from different countries who talk about how their healthcare system works. And it sounds honestly like a dream. But I also think that's one of the things that happens when you start working for yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't know, in the U.S. or outside of the U.S. too. Um, that being said, yeah. I can't imagine how much more challenging it is too with you and your family yeah, you to have kid. to navigate yeah. this. Um, would love to know your thoughts and what what other ideas other people have out there. We're this close to moving to another country. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk about this anymore. It's so sad. Okay. All right. Okay, but on anyway, to the other question, listen. which I really enjoy. Yes. What's the longest in advance you've planned a trip lately? Okay, so lately, <laughs> right now we're in Hue, Vietnam, and we planned this trip yesterday. yesterday. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, well, like, largely, we, we do plan, like, what countries we're going to visit mostly, mm -hmm. um, at least, like, a couple of months in advance, I would yeah. say. Yeah, yeah. We largely know generally what region of the world and what countries we're visiting a couple of months in advance and we'll book those flights but then when it comes to actually reaching the country and like traveling around yeah. that can change wildly depending on the day yeah absolutely absolutely like uh for example and we kind of base our travels obviously off of like where we're filming mm -hmm. right most of the time most of the time and so how we're feeling and what yeah. we're excited to see and do too yeah yeah so we travel for like, we have like an additional reason that we travel yeah. from what most people do, which most people, they plan the travel like, where's a cheap place I can go to that's going to be super awesome and fun to go to. Yeah. And then we also got to think. What time frame do I have to? Yes. And then we're also thinking, where do we want to make a cool movie that would be useful that the yeah. you guys out there would enjoy watching? So that's like another reason on top. But we normally plan those things about two months in advance, maybe three. For yeah. example... In middle of January, we're flying to Europe, mm -hmm. and we planned out just that we're going to Europe and coming back. <laughs> it's a large That's continent, <laughs> and we have six weeks over there to film a bunch of stuff, travel around, have a great old time. But we haven't planned out where we're staying, which other places we're going to, other mm -hmm. than the one place we're flying into, which is Paris, and flying mm -hmm. back out of. We haven't planned any of that, and we generally do that either like a couple of days before we leave mm -hmm. or when we land but like i would when we also get there. say that you are very good like when we find a city that we know we want to go to mm -hmm. you're very good about planning out uh, a rough itinerary of like the places we're excited to see the places that we want to make sure that we cover yep. um some like hidden gems too and then like but once we get to the city things change a lot all the time and what we decide to do changes in the middle of the day often sometimes for example we landed here in Vietnam, in Hanoi, and our plan was to make a three days in Hanoi video. Mm -hmm. And then we started thinking like, hey, that's probably not the way most people are gonna travel Vietnam. They're not just gonna come to Hanoi yeah. and then fly back out. So then we changed our entire trip. Yeah. And we're now doing like a- two, North to South. North to South, two-ish weeks in Vietnam sort of yeah. thing. So uh, we plan these things, but then generally, once we get there, the entire plan just like goes to and we end up doing something totally different. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so. it's, not, it's, it's just it's just like we I think we've learned now to I think we've also learned now. It's not that like things go bad. It's just that we start to learn that when we plan, when we over plan, I don't know, it, like it takes all the surprise and the wander yes. out. And yes. so we plan just enough, you know, just enough to know, OK, where we're going, where we're staying how long we roughly want to be there. But then we got to Hanoi. We loved it. We spent three days there. And then we thought, our initial plan was we thought we were going to go to Hanoi, end mm -hmm. up in Saigon, and then fly home. Right. But we were so like wonderfully overwhelmed by Hanoi that we wanted to see more of like the countryside and the peaceful parts of Vietnam and, and see different diverse like landscapes of Vietnam. And so mm -hmm. that's really what, made us decide okay we're in, we're just gonna travel the entire <laughs> coast of vietnam instead now and it's been going really well i think yeah 
I guess the answer is it depends, but generally we try to plan kind of as little as possible before we actually get there because we've learned over time that <laughs> what we change. think we're going to end up doing yeah. is almost never what we end up actually doing. And the like, we always want to leave room for surprises. Yes. Like, I think it's been pretty cool. Like we, I feel pretty lucky that I mean, obviously feel lucky that this is even our jobs to begin with, but mm -hmm. just in the last couple of days from that decision to not fly immediately to Saigon and leave, we've met loads of travelers, other friends that we've made along the way that we got to like share meals with and sing karaoke with, you know, yeah. and, and things that I think we wouldn't have done had we just stuck to the initial plan. Yeah. Yeah. It's been really cool. Yeah. It's been great. So, uh, yeah, I feel like we double didn't answer your question in a very concise way so <laughs> i apologize if that wasn't overly useful but genuinely we found that like the stricter we are the the stricter we are with our like original plan not only the worst videos that come out of it but also the worst time that we have traveling mm -hmm. so we found that we just need like the lightest touch the intention of like we're gonna go to vietnam and that's as deep into the planning as we get well some structure with some structure I a think. little bit of structure but yeah. as little as possible and of course our budget yes and generally done the day to the week before we leave yeah at most uh, yeah i would love to know what everyone else thinks and what how you guys usually do your planning like mm -hmm. are you the kind of person that plans things to the t or are you the kind of person that like just likes to see and go go with the flow we met a ton of people um in the last couple of days who also just like know generally that they're going to be in this country and they want to see where things go. Um, we obviously know there's some luxury that comes with having more time to travel. So when you have more time, you can just be more free with your like planning. Yeah. Um, but I think, I think, yeah, we, we found like a good balance of like structure, knowing where we're going kind of, but then letting, letting, the place surprise us as we arrive yes absolutely um, and so far vietnam has been nothing but awesome surprises yeah. i would also i mean i think but we generally want to know what you guys do like what your plans are usually mm -hmm. and how you guys like to plan i know before this youtube life i would say that i was very much a person that to the minute had to plan things <laughs> and know exactly where i was going check things off but that was also because i was new to traveling and i was traveling by myself and so i was a little bit more stringent and careful with my itinerary or just worried right like yeah. worried about missing out or yeah. not getting lost yeah. or all these other things that we just take for granted don't yeah. happen anymore but i do think as we have been able to travel more and more the like the ability to just let the world surprise you as cheesy as that sounds um has like been more of our motto yeah it's also a massive luxury because we have lots more time than most people yeah. do have in these countries so like if we can make a week-long mistake on our trip and be like ah that sucks but like yeah, yeah. we'll just stay another week yeah, you know? <laughs> and yeah. most people do not have that luxury i think it's also a mindset thing too mm -hmm. I mean, I definitely noticed that the times when we were more and more intensely focused on things and not missing out on things and where we had to go to this place and film this place and this place, it made us less open to the world and le made us less open to surprises. Yeah. Um, but definitely the more we find, and we kind of have to constantly remind ourselves, I think you even said this like the other day, let's plan very loosely what our next week is going to look like. And I, I mean... We won't give it all away, but we went on a really beautiful boat ride the other day. Yeah. And I was like going into the the deep end on researching which route you get to choose from three different routes and and based on different like geography kind of. And uh, I was going deep and we get there and Josh is like, let's just go with route two. And I was like, don't you want to know what's in it? Don't you want to know what's involved? <laughs> like what cave we get to go he's like no let's just do it and then it like turned out to be the best thing because we ended up meeting two new friends and mm -hmm. um and it, it was beautiful even, all of it was beautiful it, <laughs> it was, was beautiful. beautiful anyway it was beautiful okay that is it for today please 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 yep. ask your travel questions however we can help you just throw them in the comments. We'll answer them next week or the week after or very soon. Yeah. Let um, us know what you want to hear about. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much for watching and uh, see you next time. Bye. Bye.